Neuron, Wikipedia article audio. A neuron, also known as a neuron and nerve cell, is an electrically excitable cell that receives, processes, and transmits information through electrical and chemical signals. These signals between neurons occur via specialized connections called synapses. Neurons can connect to each other to form neural networks. Neurons are the primary components of the central nervous system, which includes the brain and spinal cord, and of the peripheral nervous system, which comprises the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system. There are many types of specialized neurons. Sensory neurons respond to one particular type of stimulus such as touch, sound, or light and all other stimuli affecting the cells of the sensory organs, and converts it into an electrical signal via transduction, which is then sent to the spinal cord or brain. Motor neurons receive signals from the brain and spinal cord to cause everything from muscle contractions and affect glandular outputs. Interneurons connect neurons to other neurons within the same region of the brain or spinal cord in neural networks. Overview Anatomy and Histology A typical neuron consists of a cell body, dendrites, and an axon. The term neurite is used to describe either a dendrite or an axon, particularly in its undifferentiated stage. Dendrites are thin structures that arise from the cell body, often extending for hundreds of micrometers and branching multiple times, giving rise to a complex dendritic tree. An axon is a special cellular extension that arises from the cell body at a site called the axon hillock and travels for a distance, as far as one meter in humans or even more in other species. Most neurons receive signals via the dendrites and send out signals down the axon. Numerous axons are often bundled into fascicles that make up the nerves in the peripheral nervous system. Bundles of axons in the central nervous system are called tracts. The cell body of a neuron frequently gives rise to multiple dendrites, but never to more than one axon although the axon may branch hundreds of times before it terminates. At the majority of synapses, signals are sent from the axon of one neuron to a dendrite of another. There are, however, many exceptions to these rules, for example, neurons can lack dendrites, or have no axon, and synapses can connect an axon to another axon or a dendrite to another dendrite. All neurons are electrically excitable, due to maintenance of voltage gradients across their membranes by means of metabolically driven ion pumps, which combine with ion channels embedded in the membrane to generate intracellular versus extracellular concentration differences of ions such as sodium, potassium, chloride, and calcium. Changes in the cross-membrane voltage can alter the function of voltage-dependent ion channels. If the voltage changes by a large enough amount, an all-or-none electrochemical pulse called an action potential is generated and this change in cross-membrane potential travels rapidly along the cell's axon, and activates synaptic connections with other cells when it arrives. In most cases, Neurons are generated by special types of stem cells during brain development and childhood. Neurons in the adult brain generally do not undergo cell division. Astrocytes are star-shaped glial cells that have also been observed to turn into neurons by virtue of the stem cell characteristic pluripotency. Neurogenesis largely ceases during adulthood in most areas of the brain. However, there is strong evidence for generation of substantial numbers of new neurons in two brain areas, the hippocampus and olfactory bulb. A neuron is a specialized type of cell found in the bodies of all eumatozoans. Only sponges and a few other simpler animals lack neurons. <laughs>
The features that define a neuron are electrical excitability and the presence of synapses, which are complex membrane junctions that transmit signals to other cells. The body's neurons, plus the glial cells that give them structural and metabolic support, together constitute the nervous system. In vertebrates, the majority of neurons belong to the central nervous system, but some reside in peripheral ganglia, and many sensory neurons are situated in sensory organs such as the retina and cochlea. A typical neuron is divided into three parts, the soma or cell body, dendrites, and axon. The soma is usually compact, the axon and dendrites are filaments that extrude from it. Dendrites typically branch profusely, getting thinner with each branching, and extending their farthest branches a few hundred micrometers from the soma. The axon leaves the soma at a swelling called the axon hillock, and can extend for great distances, giving rise to hundreds of branches. Unlike dendrites, an axon usually maintains the same diameter as it extends. The soma may give rise to numerous dendrites, but never to more than one axon. Synaptic signals from other neurons are received by the soma and dendrites, signals to other neurons are transmitted by the axon. A typical synapse, then, is a contact between the axon of one neuron and a dendrite or soma of another. Synaptic signals may be excitatory or inhibitory. If the net excitation received by a neuron over a short period of time is large enough, the neuron generates a brief pulse called an action potential, which originates at the soma and propagates rapidly along the axon, activating synapses onto other neurons as it goes. Histology and Internal Structure Many neurons fit the foregoing schema in every respect but there are also exceptions to most parts of it. There are no neurons that lack a soma, but there are neurons that lack dendrites, and others that lack an axon. Furthermore, in addition to the typical axodendritic and axisomatic synapses, there are axoaxonic and dendrodendritic synapses. The key to neural function is the synaptic signaling process which is partly electrical and partly chemical. The electrical aspect depends on properties of the neuron's membrane. Like all animal cells, the cell body of every neuron is enclosed by a plasma membrane, a bilayer of lipid molecules with many types of protein structures embedded in it. A lipid bilayer is a powerful electrical insulator, but in neurons, Many of the protein structures embedded in the membrane are electrically active. These include ion channels that permit electrically charged ions to flow across the membrane and ion pumps that actively transport ions from one side of the membrane to the other. Most ion channels are permeable only to specific types of ions. Some ion channels are voltage-gated meaning that they can be switched between open and closed states by altering the voltage difference across the membrane. Others are chemically gated, meaning that they can be switched between open and closed states by interactions with chemicals that diffuse through the extracellular fluid. The interactions between ion channels and ion pumps produce a voltage difference across the membrane typically a bit less than one-tenth of a volt at baseline. This voltage has two functions, first, it provides a power source for an assortment of voltage-dependent protein machinery that is embedded in the membrane, second, it provides a basis for electrical signal transmission between different parts of the membrane. Classification Neurons communicate by chemical and electrical synapses in a process known as neurotransmission, also called synaptic transmission. The fundamental process that triggers the release of neurotransmitters is the action potential, 
a propagating electrical signal that is generated by exploiting the electrically excitable membrane of the neuron. This is also known as a wave of depolarization. Neurons are highly specialized for the processing and transmission of cellular signals. Given their diversity of functions performed in different parts of the nervous system, there is a wide variety in their shape, size, and electrochemical properties. For instance, the soma of a neuron can vary from 4 to 100 micrometers in diameter. The accepted view of the neuron attributes dedicated functions to its various anatomical components, however, dendrites and axons often act in ways contrary to their so-called main function. Structural Classification Axons and dendrites in the central nervous system are typically only about 1 micrometer thick, while some in the peripheral nervous system are much thicker. The soma is usually about 10-25 micrometers in diameter and often is not much larger than the cell nucleus it contains. The longest axon of a human motor neuron can be over a meter long, reaching from the base of the spine to the toes. Polarity Sensory neurons can have axons that run from the toes to the posterior column of the spinal cord over 1.5 meters in adults. Giraffes have single axons several meters in length running along the entire length of their necks. Much of what is known about axonal function comes from studying the squid giant axon, an ideal experimental preparation because of its relatively immense size. Other Fully differentiated neurons are permanently post-mitotic, However, research starting around 2002 shows that additional neurons throughout the brain can originate from neural stem cells through the process of neurogenesis. These are found throughout the brain, but are particularly concentrated in the subventricular zone and subgranular zone. Numerous microscopic clumps called Nislo substance are seen when nerve cell bodies are stained with a basophilic dye. These structures consist of rough endoplasmic reticulum and associated ribosomal RNA. Named after German psychiatrist and neuropathologist Franz Nislow, they are involved in protein synthesis and their prominence can be explained by the fact that nerve cells are very metabolically active. Basophilic dyes such as aniline or hematoxylin highlight negatively charged components, and so bind to the phosphate backbone of the ribosomal RNA. Functional Classification The cell body of a neuron is supported by a complex mesh of structural proteins called neurofilaments, which are assembled into larger neurofibrils. Some neurons also contain pigment granules, such as neuromelanin, and lipofuscin, both of which accumulate with age. Other structural proteins that are important for neuronal function are actin and the tubulin of microtubules. Actin is predominantly found at the tips of axons and dendrites during neuronal development. There the actin dynamics can be modulated via an interplay with microtubule. There are different internal structural characteristics between axons and dendrites. Typical axons almost never contain ribosomes, except some in the initial segment. Dendrites contain granular endoplasmic reticulum or ribosomes, in diminishing amounts as the distance from the cell body increases. Neurons exist in a number of different shapes and sizes and can be classified by their morphology and function. The anatomist Camillo Golgi grouped neurons into two types, type I with long axons used to move signals over long distances and type II with short axons, which can often be confused with dendrites. Type I cells can be further divided by where the cell body or soma is located. The basic morphology of type I neurons, represented by spinal motor neurons, 
consists of a cell body called the soma and a long thin axon covered by the myelin sheath. Around the cell body is a branching dendritic tree that receives signals from other neurons. The end of the axon has branching terminals that release neurotransmitters into a gap called the synaptic cleft between the terminals and the dendrites of the next neuron. Most neurons can be anatomically characterized as. Furthermore, some unique neuronal types can be identified according to their location in the nervous system and distinct shape. Some examples are. Direction. Afferent and efferent also refer generally to neurons that, respectively, bring information to or send information from the brain. Action on other neurons A neuron affects other neurons by releasing a neurotransmitter that binds to chemical receptors. The effect upon the postsynaptic neuron is determined not by the presynaptic neuron or by the neurotransmitter but by the type of receptor that is activated. A neurotransmitter can be thought of as a key, and a receptor as a lock, the same type of key can here be used to open many different types of locks. Receptors can be classified broadly as excitatory, inhibitory, or modulatory. The soma is the body of the neuron. As it contains the nucleus, most protein synthesis occurs here. The nucleus can range from 3 to 18 micrometers in diameter. The dendrites of a neuron are cellular extensions with many branches. This overall shape and structure is referred to metaphorically as a dendritic tree. This is where the majority of input to the neuron occurs via the dendritic spine. The axon is a finer, cable-like projection that can extend tens, hundreds, or even tens of thousands of times the diameter of the soma in length. The axon carries nerve signals away from the soma. Many neurons have only one axon, but this axon may and usually will undergo extensive branching, enabling communication with many target cells. The part of the axon where it emerges from the soma is called the axon hillock. Besides being an anatomical structure, the axon hillock is also the part of the neuron that has the greatest density of voltage-dependent sodium channels. This makes it the most easily excited part of the neuron and the spike initiation zone for the axon, in electrophysiological terms it has the most negative action potential threshold. While the axon and axon hillock are generally involved in information outflow, this region can also receive input from other neurons. The axon terminal contains synapses, specialized structures where neurotransmitter chemicals are released to communicate with target neurons. The two most common neurotransmitters in the brain, glutamate and GABA, have actions that are largely consistent. Glutamate acts on several different types of receptors, and have effects that are excitatory at ionotropic receptors and a modulatory effect at metabotropic receptors. Similarly, GABA acts on several different types of receptors but all of them have effects that are inhibitory. Because of this consistency, it is common for neuroscientists to simplify the terminology by referring to cells that release glutamate as excitatory neurons, and cells that release GABA as inhibitory neurons. Since over 90% of the neurons in the brain release either glutamate or GABA, these labels encompass the great majority of neurons. There are also other types of neurons that have consistent effects on their targets, for example, excitatory motor neurons in the spinal cord that release acetylcholine, and inhibitory spinal neurons that release glycine. The distinction between excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitters is not absolute, however. Rather, it depends on the class of chemical receptors present on the postsynaptic neuron. In principle, 
a single neuron, releasing a single neurotransmitter, can have excitatory effects on some targets, inhibitory effects on others, and modulatory effects on others still. For example, photoreceptor cells in the retina constantly release the neurotransmitter glutamate in the absence of light. So-called off-bipolar cells are, like most neurons, excited by the released glutamate. However, neighboring target neurons called on bipolar cells are instead inhibited by glutamate, because they lack the typical ionotropic glutamate receptors and instead express a class of inhibitory metabotropic glutamate receptors. When light is present, the photoreceptors cease releasing glutamate, which relieves the on bipolar cells from inhibition, activating them, this simultaneously removes the excitation from the off bipolar cells, silencing them. Unipolar, only one process, bipolar, one axon and one dendrite, multipolar, one axon and two or more dendrites, Golgi. -I. Neurons with long projecting axonal processes, examples are pyramidal cells, Porcunye cells, and anterior horn cells, Golgi 2, neurons whose axonal process projects locally, the best example is the granule cell. It is possible to identify the type of inhibitory effect a presynaptic neuron will have on a postsynaptic neuron based on the proteins the presynaptic neuron expresses. Parvalbumin expressing neurons typically dampen the output signal of the postsynaptic neuron in the visual cortex, whereas somatostatin expressing neurons typically block dendritic inputs to the postsynaptic neuron. Discharge Patterns Classification by Neurotransmitter Production Connectivity Mechanisms for Propagating Action Potentials Neurons have intrinsic electroresponsive properties like intrinsic transmembrane voltage oscillatory patterns. So neurons can be classified according to their electrophysiological characteristics. Basket cells, interneurons that form a dense plexus of terminals around the soma of target cells, found in the cortex and cerebellum, BET cells, large motor neurons, Lugaro cells, interneurons of the cerebellum, medium spiny neurons, most neurons in the corpus striatum, Porcunye cells, huge neurons in the cerebellum, a type of Golgi I multipolar neuron, pyramidal cells, neurons with triangular soma, a type of Golgi I. Renshaw cells, neurons with both ends linked to alpha motor neurons. Unipolar brush cells, interneurons with unique dendrite ending in a brush like tuft, granule cells, a type of Golgi II neuron, anterior horn cells, motoneurons located in the spinal cord, spindle cells, interneurons that connect widely separated areas of the brain. Neurons communicate with one another via synapses, where the axon terminal or end passant bouton of one cell contacts another neuron's dendrite, soma or, less commonly, axon. Neurons such as Porcunye cells in the cerebellum can have over 1,000 dendritic branches, making connections with tens of thousands of other cells, other neurons such as the magnocellular neurons of the supraoptic nucleus, have only one or two dendrites, each of which receives thousands of synapses. Synapses can be excitatory or inhibitory and either increase or decrease activity in the target neuron, respectively. Some neurons also communicate via electrical synapses, which are direct electrically conductive junctions between cells. In a chemical synapse, the process of synaptic transmission is as follows, when an action potential reaches the axon terminal, it opens voltage-gated calcium channels, 
allowing calcium ions to enter the terminal. Calcium causes synaptic vesicles filled with neurotransmitter molecules to fuse with the membrane, releasing their contents into the synaptic cleft. The neurotransmitters diffuse across the synaptic cleft and activate receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. High cytosolic calcium in the axon terminal also triggers mitochondrial calcium uptake, which, in turn, activates mitochondrial energy metabolism to produce ADP to support continuous neurotransmission. An autaps is a synapse in which a neuron's axon connects to its own dendrites. Tonic or regular spiking Some neurons are typically constantly active. Example, interneurons in neurostriatum, phasic or bursting. Neurons that fire in bursts are called phasic, fast spiking. Some neurons are notable for their high firing rates, for example some types of cortical inhibitory interneurons, cells in globus pallidus, retinal ganglion cells. The human brain has a huge number of synapses. Each of the 10-11 neurons has on average 7,000 synaptic connections to other neurons. It has been estimated that the brain of a 3-year-old child has about 10-15 synapses. This number declines with age, stabilizing by adulthood. Estimates vary for an adult, ranging from 10-14 to 5x-10-14 synapses. In 1937, John Zachary Young suggested that the squid giant axon could be used to study neuronal electrical properties. Being larger than but similar in nature to human neurons, squid cells were easier to study. By inserting electrodes into the giant squid axons, accurate measurements were made of the membrane potential. The cell membrane of the axon and soma contain voltage-gated ion channels that allow the neuron to generate and propagate an electrical signal. These signals are generated and propagated by charge-carrying ions including sodium, potassium, chloride, and calcium. Neural Coding There are several stimuli that can activate a neuron leading to electrical activity, including pressure stretch, chemical transmitters, and changes of the electric potential across the cell membrane. Stimuli cause specific ion channels within the cell membrane to open, leading to a flow of ions through the cell membrane, changing the membrane potential. Thin neurons and axons require less metabolic expense to produce and carry action potentials, but thicker axons convey impulses more rapidly. To minimize metabolic expense while maintaining rapid conduction, many neurons have insulating sheaths of myelin around their axons. The sheaths are formed by glial cells, oligodendrocytes in the central nervous system and Schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system. The sheath enables action potentials to travel faster than in unmyelinated axons of the same diameter, whilst using less energy. The myelin sheath in peripheral nerves normally runs along the axon in sections about 1 mm long, punctuated by unsheathed nodes of Ranvier, which contain a high density of voltage-gated ion channels. Multiple sclerosis is a neurological disorder that results from demyelination of axons in the central nervous system. Some neurons do not generate action potentials, but instead generate a graded electrical signal, which in turn causes graded neurotransmitter release. Such non-spiking neurons tend to be sensory neurons or interneurons, because they cannot carry signals long distances. All or None Principle History Neuron Doctrine Neural coding is concerned with how sensory and other information is represented in the brain by neurons.
The main goal of studying neural coding is to characterize the relationship between the stimulus and the individual or ensemble neuronal responses, and the relationships amongst the electrical activities of the neurons within the ensemble. It is thought that neurons can encode both digital and analog information. The conduction of nerve impulses is an example of an all or none response. In other words, if a neuron responds at all, then it must respond completely. Greater intensity of stimulation does not produce a stronger signal but can produce a higher frequency of firing. There are different types of receptor responses to stimuli, slowly adapting or tonic receptors respond to steady stimulus and produce a steady rate of firing. These tonic receptors most often respond to increased intensity of stimulus by increasing their firing frequency, usually as a power function of stimulus plotted against impulses per second. This can be likened to an intrinsic property of light where to get greater intensity of a specific frequency there have to be more photons, as the photons can't become stronger for a specific frequency. There are a number of other receptor types that are called quickly adapting or phasic receptors, where firing decreases or stops with steady stimulus, examples include, skin when touched by an object causes the neurons to fire, but if the object maintains even pressure against the skin, the neurons stop firing. The neurons of the skin and muscles that are responsive to pressure and vibration have filtering accessory structures that aid their function. The Pacinian corpuscle is one such structure. It has concentric layers like an onion, which form around the axon terminal. When pressure is applied and the corpuscle is deformed, mechanical stimulus is transferred to the axon, which fires. If the pressure is steady, there is no more stimulus, thus, typically these neurons respond with a transient depolarization during the initial deformation and again when the pressure is removed, which causes the corpuscle to change shape again. Other types of adaptation are important in extending the function of a number of other neurons. The neuron's place as the primary functional unit of the nervous system was first recognized in the late 19th century through the work of the Spanish anatomist Santiago Ramón y Cajal. Neurons in the Brain To make the structure of individual neurons visible, Ramón y Cajal improved a silver staining process that had been developed by Camilo Golgi. The improved process involves a technique called double impregnation and is still in use today. In 1888 Ramon Y. Cajal published a paper about the bird cerebellum. In this paper, he tells he could not find evidence for anastomies between axons and dendrites and calls each nervous element an absolutely autonomous canton. This became known as the Neuron Doctrine one of the central tenets of modern neuroscience. In 1891 the German anatomist Heinrich Wilhelm Waldier wrote a highly influential review about the neuron doctrine in which he introduced the term neuron to describe the anatomical and physiological unit of the nervous system. The silver impregnation stains are an extremely useful method for neuroanatomical investigations because, for reasons unknown, it stains a very small percentage of cells in a tissue, so one is able to see the complete microstructure of individual neurons without much overlap from other cells in the densely packed brain. The neuron doctrine is the now fundamental idea that neurons are the basic structural and functional units of the nervous system. The theory was put forward by Santiago Ramón y Cajal in the late 19th century. It held that neurons are discrete cells, acting as metabolically distinct units. Later discoveries yielded a few refinements to the simplest form of the doctrine. For example, glial cells, which are not considered neurons, 
play an essential role in information processing. Also, electrical synapses are more common than previously thought, meaning that there are direct, cytoplasmic connections between neurons. In fact, there are examples of neurons forming even tighter coupling, the squid giant axon arises from the fusion of multiple axons. Ramon Y. Cajal also postulated the law of dynamic polarization, which states that a neuron receives signals at its dendrites and cell body and transmits them, as action potentials, along the axon in one direction, away from the cell body. The law of dynamic polarization has important exceptions, Dendrites can serve as synaptic output sites of neurons and axons can receive synaptic inputs. The number of neurons in the brain varies dramatically from species to species. The adult human brain contains about 85 to 86 billion neurons, of which 16.3 billion are in the cerebral cortex and 69 billion in the cerebellum. By contrast, the nematode worm Sonorabditis elegans has just 302 neurons, making it an ideal experimental subject as scientists have been able to map all of the organism's neurons. The fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster, a common subject in biological experiments, has around 100,000 neurons and exhibits many complex behaviors. Many properties of neurons from the type of neurotransmitters used to ion channel composition, are maintained across species, allowing scientists to study processes occurring in more complex organisms in much simpler experimental systems. Charcot-Marie tooth disease is a heterogeneous inherited disorder of nerves that is characterized by loss of muscle tissue and touch sensation predominantly in the feet and legs but also in the hands and arms in the advanced stages of disease. Presently incurable, this disease is one of the most common inherited neurological disorders, with 37 in 100,000 affected. Alzheimer's disease, also known simply as Alzheimer's, is a neurodegenerative disease characterized by progressive cognitive deterioration together with declining activities of daily living and neuropsychiatric symptoms or behavioral changes. The most striking early symptom is loss of short-term memory, which usually manifests as minor forgetfulness that becomes steadily more pronounced with illness progression, with relative preservation of older memories. As the disorder progresses, cognitive impairment extends to the domains of language, skilled movements and recognition, and functions such as decision-making and planning become impaired. Neurological Disorders Demyelination Parkinson's disease, also known as Parkinson's disease, is a degenerative disorder of the central nervous system that often impairs the sufferer's motor skills and speech. Parkinson's disease belongs to a group of conditions called movement disorders. It is characterized by muscle rigidity, tremor, a slowing of physical movement, and in extreme cases, a loss of physical movement. The primary symptoms are the results of decreased stimulation of the motor cortex by the basal ganglia, normally caused by the insufficient formation and action of dopamine, which is produced in the dopaminergic neurons of the brain. Secondary symptoms may include high-level cognitive dysfunction and subtle language problems. PD is both chronic and progressive. Myasthenia gravis is a neuromuscular disease leading to fluctuating muscle weakness and fatigability during simple activities. Weakness is typically caused by circulating antibodies that block acetylcholine receptors at the postsynaptic neuromuscular junction, inhibiting the stimulative effect of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Myasthenia is treated with immunosuppressants cholinesterase inhibitors and, in selected cases, thymectomy.
Axonal degeneration. Demyelination is the act of demyelinating, or the loss of the myelin sheath insulating the nerves. When myelin degrades, conduction of signals along the nerve can be impaired or lost, and the nerve eventually withers. This leads to certain neurodegenerative disorders like multiple sclerosis and chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. Neurogenesis Nerve Regeneration Although most injury responses include a calcium influx signaling to promote resealing of severed parts, axonal injuries initially lead to acute axonal degeneration, which is rapid separation of the proximal and distal ends within 30 minutes of injury. Degeneration follows with swelling of the axolemma, and eventually leads to bead-like formation. Granular disintegration of the axonal cytoskeleton and inner organelles occurs after axolemma degradation. Early changes include accumulation of mitochondria in the paranodal regions at the site of injury. Endoplasmic reticulum degrades and mitochondria swell up and eventually disintegrate. The disintegration is dependent on ubiquitin and calpane proteases suggesting that axonal degeneration is an active process. Thus the axon undergoes complete fragmentation. The process takes about roughly 24 HRS in the peripheral nervous system, and longer in the CNS. The signaling pathways leading to axolemma degeneration are currently unknown. It has been demonstrated that neurogenesis can sometimes occur in the adult vertebrate brain, a finding that led to controversy in 1999. Later studies of the age of human neurons suggest that this process occurs only for a minority of cells, and a vast majority of neurons composing the neocortex were formed before birth and persist without replacement. The body contains a variety of stem cell types that have the capacity to differentiate into neurons. A report in Nature suggested that researchers had found a way to transform human skin cells into working nerve cells using a process called transdifferentiation in which cells are forced to adopt new identities. It is often possible for peripheral axons to regrow if they are severed but a neuron cannot be functionally replaced by one of another type. 